بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الأطهار وصحابته الأخيار ما تعاقب الليل والنهار يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة Indeed all praise is due to Allah alone subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him We believe in him subhanahu wa ta'ala And we rely on him and we refer all our affairs to him We send peace and blessings upon our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam The seal of the prophets The one sent with the greatest character Wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim and indeed you are upon great character. And so he alayhi salatu was salam, he is the best of people in character and he stated, أَكْمَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِيمَانًا أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقًا Or كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ والسلام, He says that the most complete of the believers in faith are those with the best character. And he said alayhi salatu was salam, أَقْرَبُكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَحَاسِنُكُمْ خُلُقًا And the nearest of you to me in position on the day of Qiyamah are those with the best character. And he said عليه الصلاة والسلام I have only been sent إنما بعثت لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق I have only been sent to perfect the noble traits of character. And so he عليه الصلاة والسلام had the most perfect character. Every aspect of his character takes a lifetime to master. And the Messenger والسلام, he mastered all the noble traits of character in the most perfect human way, in the most balanced way. And so may abundant peace and blessings be upon our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad والسلام, upon his spouses, his household, his descendants, and upon his guided khulafa and the companions, and upon us with them. Dear brothers and sisters, I remind myself and yourselves to have taqwa of Allah. Be mindful and aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all contexts at all times. As that is the command of Allah to every one of us, where Allah addresses us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqu Allah, wal tanzur nafsu ma qaddamat lighad, wa attaqu Allah, inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon. O you who believe, fear Allah. Beware of Allah, and let each soul look at what it has prepared for tomorrow. Death is not far. Death, which seems distant, when it approaches, its life seems like it was but a moment. And so Allah Ta'ala describes death as occurring tomorrow. And so the one who is mindful of Allah always keeps death in his sight, and is always in preparation for the meeting with Allah Ta'ala. And whoever adheres to this taqwa, they have attained the secret to success with Allah. The taqwa is sirru miftah al najah fi dunya wal akhirah. It is the secret to succeeding and prevailing in this dunya and akhirah. And so may Allah Ta'ala grant us taqwa and make us among the muttaqeen. Dear brothers and sisters, it's been narrated by Abdurrahman ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو الصادق المسدوق He said that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم informed us 
and he is the most truthful and the most believed. إن أحدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه نطفة ثم يكون علقة أربعين يوما ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك فينفخ فينفخ فيه الروح فيؤمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأجله وعمله وشقي وسعيد فهو الذي لا إله إلا هو فهو الذي لا إله إلا غيره فهو الذي لا إله إلا هو إن أحدكم لا يعمل بعمل أهل الجنة حتى حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيدخلها وإن أحدكم لا يعمل بعمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها رواه البخاري ومسلم in this authentic hadith narrated by Bukhari and Muslim, these are, this is one of the first ahadith in the 40 hadith of Imam al-Nawawi. Muslim children typically memorize this in their elementary days. And many of you probably here have memorized this hadith and have studied it at some point in your life. It's narrated by Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'udin radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in which he says, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us and he is the most truthful and most believed that the creation of one of you forms in the womb of his mother for 40 days and then he becomes a nutafa, a droplet similarly and then he becomes a mudga, a chunk of flesh so for a similar period and then a malak is sent to him, an angel is appointed to him and this angel bring, and, and by this angel the soul is breathed into this person and so now he's a living being. And then the angel is commanded to write down four things. بِكَتْبِ رِزْقِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ وَأَجَلِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ وَشَقِيٍّ وَسَعِيدٍ He writes down the provisions of this creation, this child that has been conceived. And their death as well. Their provisions and their lifespan. He also writes down their amal. What will be of their deeds? And also if they're going to be among the su'ada or the ashqiyya, among those who are happy with Allah and receive the reward of Jannah, or the, so the ashqiyya, the miserable, those who are doomed to the hellfire, may Allah protect us from them. And then he says, alayhi salatu was salam, فَوَالَّذِي لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُوْ And by him, by, by he there is no God except him. One of you will do the deeds of, Ahl, of the people of Jannah until there is only an arm span between him and Jannah. And then the decree precedes him and he ends up performing the deeds of the people of Hellfire and he enters Hellfire. And then he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, and indeed one of you will do the people, the deeds of the people of Jannah. Until there is only this distance of an arm span between them and Jannah. And then the decree, the kitab will precede him, and he will do the deeds of the people of hellfire, and he enters it. This hadith, the main lesson of it is about qadr. It's about predestiny, about iman, بِالْقَضَاءِ وَالْقَدَرِ خَيْرِهِ وَشَرِّهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And that is why Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله عنه He emphasized in the beginning the truthfulness of the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم Meaning if this is what the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام has stated then it is indeed true He is the Sadiq and he is the Masduq He is the most truthful spoken and he is the one that is most believed by people so it is impossible for this information to be inaccurate. So he informs us that the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala precedes all matters. In our personal lives and also beyond our personal lives, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَنَاهُ بِقَدَرٍ Indeed, we have created everything with a predestiny. But in this hadith, it specifically talks about the human being and the decree of the human being. And so Allah Ta'ala says that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informs us that 
Once a person forms in the womb of their mother and the angel is sent to them and the soul is breathed into them, four things are written. Their, uh, their, their, uh, uh, their lifespan is written. Their risk is written. Their deeds are written. And if they will be among the people of Jannah and not is written. He says والسلام, to the extent that a person will do the deeds of Ahl of Jannah. But then his decree will precede him. And, he, and there, there's only the distance of an arm span between him and Jannah. He's almost there. He's almost attained the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the decree will precede him and he ends up performing the deeds of Ahl nar and he will enter it. And likewise, the, uh, the opposite, a man will perform the deeds of Ahl nar until there's only an arm span between them and Nar. And then the decree will precede him and he will, and, and, and he will perform the deeds of Ahl nar and enter it. And so one of the lessons we take is no one can ever feel safe that they're going to be among the people of Jannah. No one can assure themselves that I will, I will die upon La ilaha illallah. And that is why the Musalihin and the awliya, they feared, they feared that their state might change towards the end of their life. They feared and they prayed to Allah to give them husn al-khatimah, give, give them a, 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 a righteous ending. Rather they said, husn al-khatimah ain al karama They said that to have a righteous ending is the greatest sign of Allah's mercy for a person. That he allows them to die with La ilaha illallah. May Allah make La ilaha illallah our last words. And so, a couple lessons we can take. There's many to be, much to be said. But for the sake of time, inshallah ta'ala, we'll focus on two points. The first is that each one of us is created with his own decree. Our parents whom we are born to. The circumstances that we are born in, the time, the era that we are born in, the society and culture that we are born in, our biology that we have been born with, our strengths and our weaknesses, our hardships and our ease, all of these matters have been predestined for us. And so we strive, but let us realize that all of these affairs have been predestined by Allah with perfection and wisdom. There is a wisdom to why things operate they do what, the way they do and why things are the way they are and why things happen to us the way they happen. It is all run by Allah. Nothing is out of control even if we feel things might be out of control. We might feel that we have no control. And we really don't. The control that we have over our lives is very minimum. But there are so many factors beyond us that we cannot control and these factors interact with each other consistently on a micro level and on a macro level and all of these affairs are in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is hikmatun baligha there is in wisdom beyond us why, to why these affairs happen the way they do. And the second point that we want to take from this hadith is that the Prophet ﷺ states that a person might do the deeds of Ahl Jannah but end up among the people of Hellfire. So the question begs, is, are, we in, are we able to earn Jannah and Naar or is this something that we has been predetermined for us? And, and, and the Quran is clear that Jannah is according to the deeds of a person. By the Rahmah of Allah and Allah grants them the Rahmah according to their deeds. Enter Jannah because of what you used to do. So clearly the Quran re repetitively states that the Jannah and Nar are earned and not given as a predestined punishment. So how do we understand the hadith that a man performs the deeds of Ahl Jannah but then ends up that the predestiny overtakes him. And the scholars mention it is he did the deeds of Ahl Jannah in what was apparent to people. But inwardly, his iman was not sincere and there was hypocrisy and there was spiritual uh, conflict within his heart. And so Allah exposes him. And same with the one who was doing the deeds of Ahl al-Nar. 
He did the deeds of Ahl al what was apparent, but inwardly his conviction in Allah, his remorse and his regret was very strong. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes sure the apparent deeds of each person is according to the reality in their hearts. And that is what the hadith is reflecting. And that is why no, no believer should ever feel secure no matter how much salah they perform, how much sadaqah they give. They must fear the state of their heart and the reality of their connection with Allah Ta'ala. And so may Allah give us all husn al khatima. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. And among the points that I want to take from this hadith is that Within our, the, the predestiny that each one of us is granted is we are all given strengths and weaknesses, trials and blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has predestined for us. But then every one of us is capable of becoming a righteous servant of Allah, is capable of becoming a wali of Allah according to their circumstance. Every single person, every believer, no matter who they are, where they come from, how much knowledge they have, how much ibadah they're able to perform, every single person can become a wali of Allah Ta'ala and be among the most beloved people of Allah. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he cultivated this in the companions, showing them that every one of you has the potential to be a great servant of Allah. He called... Hamza radiallahu anhu, Asadullahi wa Rasulu. Hamza radiallahu anhu, he became a Muslim as an old man. But then he was a warrior and he, was, he became the lion of Allah and his messenger. He called Khalid bin Walid Sayfullah al Masloon, the sword of Allah. Khalid bin Walid, when he used to lead the Salah, lead his army in prayer, he used to make mistakes sometimes even with the recitation of the Quran. Because of how limited his knowledge was with the memorization of Quran because he was so occupied with battle. But his devotion, what was his skill? He was a warrior, he was a commander, he was a strategist. He dedicated that skill that Allah had given him and that talent that Allah had given him to the service of Allah and his messenger. And so he received this title by the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says in another hadith, Arhamu ummati bi ummati Abu Bakr. The most merciful of my nation to my nation is Abu Bakr. وَأَشَدُّهُمْ فِي أَمْرِ اللَّهِ عُمَرِ And the strongest, the most fierce of them regarding the command of Allah is Umar. وَأَصْدَقُهُمْ حَيَاء Uthman. And the most truthfully modest among them is Uthman. وَأَعْلَمُهُمْ بِالْحَلَالِ وَالْحَرَامِ مُعَادِ بْنُ Jabal. And the most knowledgeable of them regarding what is halal and haram is Mu'ad bin Jabal. وَأَفْرَضُهُمْ زَيْدِ بْنُ ثَابِتِ And the most knowledgeable with regards to inheritance is Zayd ibn Thabit. وَأَقْرَأُهُمْ أُبَيْ بْنُ كَعْبِ And the best reciter among them is Ubay ibn Ka'b. And so, and so the Prophet والسلام, he recognized in each companion his strongest traits. And he cultivated it alayhi salatu wasalam. He recognized it. He didn't force those who like to be students to be warriors. And those who were warriors to be scholars. And those who were leaders to be students. He, he, he inspired everyone to excel with the strength that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. If Allah has given one wealth, there is a gate for the people that give sadaqah. If Allah has given one the love of ibadah, and they like to pray a lot, and they like to fast a lot, there is a gate for the people that fast and pray abundantly. And if someone loves the bait of Allah and they always are going to Umrah, as soon as they leave the sacred haram, they are thinking about their return to the haram. There is a gate for the people of, Jan of Hajj and who love the sacred land. And likewise, there is an opportunity for everyone to enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see this demonstrated in practice by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in numerous ahadith. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam is questioned, Ayyul a'mali afdhul? He's questioned, what, is, what are the best deeds? In one hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al-Imanu billah. In another hadith, he says, Birul walidain. In another hadith, he says, As-salatu ala liwaqtiha. Another, he says, 
believing in Allah, the other his hadith, he gives another question or the answer. He said, being dutiful to your parents. Another man comes, he says, praying on time. Another man comes, he says, jihad fi sabilillah. Another man comes, he said, feeding the poor and spreading the peace upon those who do you know and you don't know and praying at night. Another person comes, he said, learning the Quran and teaching it. He's teaching them. He's not giving them a universal answer. That the most perfect deed in, to, in the sight of Allah is this single thing. Rather, he says, the most, deed, the most beloved deed to Allah is that which you are able to perform the best. And that which you need to correct. And if you do that, that is the most beloved deed to Allah for you. And so the Messenger والسلام, he cultivated this, this tarbiyah in Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And so let every believer have that, have, every believer has that potential. Every believing man and woman to be a great servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if they are sincere in their intentions and devoted and steadfast in the, in the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us sincerity. May Allah grant us steadfastness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us for his obedience. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu ma sami'atum wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم وأتبعوا السيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن There are many examples we can share They, I want to share one example of a man who is not a companion he did not meet the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he was alive during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu He was a Muslim during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he could never meet the Messenger Alaihi Sallallahu Wasallam. Not for his own personal obst obstacles. But because he was obeying Allah. He couldn't travel to Mecca or to Medina to be with the Messenger Alaihi Sallallahu Wasallam to simply visit. And say, Ya Rasulullah, I have believed in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And then go, he couldn't do that much. But for the sake of Allah, he couldn't do as a deed that would have earned him a status of Sahaba. Who is this man? He's Uwais al-Qarani radiallahu anhu. He's among the tabi'een. His story is that he had a old mother. Whom is described as being bedridden. She had a serious disability and was very ill. And she, he was her only child. So Uwais al-Qarani radiallahu an, he couldn't travel so to not cause discomfort to his mother. He could have hired someone, but his mother wanted him to be with her, to care for her, to be by her side. He never got married. Because he was worried that whoever he married would not be able to endure the care that his mother would need. So he stayed in Yemen. He stayed in his town. He believed in Allah. He was devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a righteous man. But the greatest deed of seeing the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he couldn't achieve. So Allah ta'ala sends Jibreel alayhi salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah praises this man's name to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That there is a servant such and such from the town of Murad, Murad from the village of, of, uh, of, of uh, Qaran. His name is Uwais Al-Qarani. He had leprosy but he recovered except the spot of one coin on his body. He has an ill mother. And, and, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells this to the companions. Among them was Umar. He tells them, if you see him, ask him to seek forgiveness for you. And if this man swore by the name of Allah, Allah would fulfill his oath. If he was to say, Wallahi, I will do this, or this will, I, I, this will happen, Allah would make sure that the affairs occur to the oath of Uwais. This is what, this is his mustajab al-da'wah. The greatest of the awliya, the Prophet Sallallahu said, he's khayru tabi'een, he is the best of the generation after the companions. 
So Sayyidina Umar, he knows how noble the status of Uwais al qarni is. So every time a jama'ah comes from Yemen, that's where he's from, he says, is Uwais ibn Amr among you? Until one day they said yes. And they tell him he's so and so, go to him. And so he goes to him, he says, are you Uwais ibn Amr? He said yes. He said, are you from the town of Murad, uh, Qaran? He says yes, from the village of Murad. He said yes. He said, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said this about you. And so please, seek Allah's forgiveness for me. He's seeking the forgiveness for Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq radiallahu anhu already granted Jannah. The question begs, what is the secret of Uwais? Number one, his sincerity with Allah and his truthfulness with his intention to be with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a man devoted to Allah and to his messenger and it wasn't only lip service, it wasn't just a high moment at some time in his life, but he was a man that was truthful to that intention and that, and that devotion his entire life. And second, he worshipped Allah according to what was available to him. He couldn't go to jihad, he couldn't be with the Prophet ﷺ, he couldn't make hijrah, but he had a mother and he knew that was one of the most beloved deeds to, to Allah Ta'ala. And so he cared for his mother, he was dutiful to her, he cared for her in the best way a child can care for a parent, and by that righteousness, Allah earned great, granted him the status. To show us that anyone can attain such a status, any believer can be, it's like Uwais al-Qarani, can be among the awliya. If they are truly devoted to Allah and adherent, to, they're sincere and they're adherent to the commands of Allah according to the circumstances that they are in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast and make us devoted servants. May Allah make us among those who are heedful and mindful of His commands in all circumstances. May Allah make us among the awliya salihin. Allahumma ameen. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayu al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الملائلة على إلى يوم الدين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم عليك بالظالمين اللهم عليك بالظالمين الغاصبين يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا إنا نجعلك في نحورهم ونعوذ بك من شرورهم وانصر واحفظ إخواننا المستضعفين في غزة وفي كل مكان يا رب العالمين ولا حول لنا ولا قوة إلا بالله العزيز الحكيم حسبي الله ونعم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والحمد لله رب العالمين واقم الصلاة